Senator Dalphone. Well, busy day. J'aimerais aujourd'hui parler sur. Today, I would like to speak to the amendment proposed yesterday by Senator Saint Germain regarding the motion I made for the Speaker Bro Temporary to be elected through a secret ballot by all senators. Establish a principle, an important principle, that the, pro, the next pro tempore speaker should be elected by all of us, all of us through a secret ballot, make us all equal and having an opportunity to decide who should be the next speaker pro tempore. In the, and so I, I'm speaking now on the amendment. First, I would like to thank very much Senator Saint-Germain and Senator Omidvar two members of the ISG leadership to have expressed their strong support for the motion and the principles that the next speaker pro tempore should be elected by the a secret vote of all the senators. I think this is an important point and this is the main point of my motion. Accessoirement, ma motion prévoit que la procédure... The motion also outlines that the procedure for selecting the next speaker pro tempore be a neutral person in consultation with the leaders and facilitators of all the Senate groups, including, of course, the contribution of Senators Saint-Germain and, Sen and a co-facilitator from the ISG. This could be done during the summer adjournment. That way, when we come back in September, we will be able to proceed with this election. In my speech, I refer to the current practice of the House of Commons to elect their speaker, which is codified in the House of Commons Rules, Section 7, which would be easily adaptable for the election in September. I would like to indicate that Section 7.2 of the Standing Orders of the Other Place stipulates that when it comes to the second position of the House of Commons, in other words, the vice chair, the person must be aware of the other official language, which is not that of the chair. That means the rules in place in the House of Commons indicate that it would be a logical to set aside indicates that there's a procedure that recognizes official linguistic duality. And so I propose that a secret ballot of the speaker pro tempore be moved forward. And I'm certain that there will be support for this measure. Senator Saint-Germain can certainly demonstrate what her position is during consultations. I'm persuaded that the speaker could look at this important aspect of the House of Commons rules. The proposed amendment is not intended to prevent the passage of the principle of a secret ballot election of the next speaker pro tempore. I am ready to support the amendment and I will leave it to the speaker to set up temporary rules when the Rules and Procedure Committee establish, meets to establish the permanent amendments to our rules. We will then be able to draft the appropriate rule. However, for now, I think that the situation is urgent and we need to set up a flexible rule that will allow us to choose, to choose by September the speaker pro tempore. Our facilitators and leaders will be able to draft and debate this. I invite all of my colleagues to reject the amendment and to adopt the main motion with the few hours that we have left today in order for us to be able to live through the very first reform of our rules by September, which is the election of a chair. And this is an important matter for everyone who believes in Senate reform. 
I'm sure that Senator Tanas shares my point of view and Senator Plett as well. I'm sure they both agree with electing a speaker pro tempore with a secret ballot. Thank you. Senator Saint-Germain, did you wish to ask a question? Senator Delfon, I support your motion on the secret ballot. I wish to ask whether you see, understood the substance of the motion, which is based on the rules of the House of Commons, the willingness to include non-anglophones and non-francophones, including indigenous persons whose first language is not English or French, and those who whose first language is other than English or French. Senator Delfon. The senator would be able to fulfill the functions of temporary speaker. The example that you give is excellent. If the speakership was taken on, and I hope this is the case, by someone from First Nations, whose first language is not French or English, how could we apply this provision when it is required that the person must be familiar with the official language that is not that of the speaker at the time? How do we judge this? It, is it based on the first official language one learned, whether it was French or English? I think there's a great deal of discussion to be done about the application of this principle, and that's not a bad thing. This summer, will the speaker force possible candidates to pass language tests for September? I think that this is essentially a technical issue that is not the principle of the motion. The principle of the motion is that the Senate will elect its speaker pro tempore through a secret vote. If we start to apply different provisions to 104 people, I don't think we'll be able to achieve this.